Hello and welcome to another episode of the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast. This is John Jance. My guest today is Liz Lathan. She's a community design strategist, community enablement architect. I've got all kinds of terms here. Pioneer of, of community as a service and creator of return on emotion, the quantifiable value of experiences. So I don't even know where to start, but Liz, welcome to the show. You know, it's when you get to make up all of your own exactly. titles, right? <laughs> exactly. Thanks for having me. So um, I read on one of your recent uh, LinkedIn posts, I think it was, uh, community first companies are growing 30% faster than product first companies. So there's a lot to unpack there. First off, what's a community first company in your your definition? Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at the marketing funnel and the evolution of the marketing funnel, it's how companies are evolving to engage their not only their current customers, but their prospects, too. So if you old days, product first funnel was, uh, you know, awareness, consideration, purchase, get the product out there, let people know you have a solution to their problem and your product is it and go down the pipe. Then you move to the evolution of customer first marketing funnel where we have our buyer's journey. Just got to learn, try, buy, advocate, all that stuff. We believe that we're now evolving to a community first way of doing the marketing funnel. And so we, the, the process we see in the funnel now is the top of funnel is the, the show. That could be a podcast, it could be a book, it could be a TikTok show, whatever it is, it's your top of funnel using the people and the content from your community. And the next one down goes to the site, where's the place where people can actually find the people behind your community. So it's not Lululemon's shop of stuff, it's Lululemon's events and gathering mm -hmm. and Slack channel and the place where they can connect with actual people. The next one is the series of gatherings, because that's what community is all about, whether it's virtual or in-person, it does not matter, but you have to bring the people together. And then one we like to call the sounding board, which is the small five to seven people that's either your advisory board or their own advisory board. And you're just mining them for trends and insights. And um, they are your testimonials. They are the people helping you determine what content's relevant. And then finally, our shareable moment is kind of the advocate part of the buyer's journey is uh, it's a swag store or it's content that you've created that they can share or those white papers. But the whole funnel is built on creating content by and for the community and reshared by them. And it turns into actually a flywheel. Usually your flywheel and your funnel are totally different. This is one in the same. You just move them down the pipe and then it just spins it all up. So, so, so the topic, uh, it's funny. Uh, do you know Mark Schaefer? Um, it's been on the show before. Probably I love your podcast. Him. Um, and he, um, he's got a new book coming out in January. He just pinged me today to be on this show and it's called belonging to the brand. Why community is the last great marketing strategy. So, um, I think this is a topic that's not going away fast, is it? I agree. You know, my major concern is that community is going to become that useless word, like experiential, where <laughs> no one has a real definition and it means something different to everyone. And then it means nothing. So yeah. I think it's really important for us to kind of grab that bull by the horns and kind of define it right now. So uh, as I listened to you uh, talk about those ideas in the, in this journey or funnel, as you were calling it, you know, how do you, I mean, does it matter what I sell? <laughs> um, I mean, because I could see a very product oriented company having trouble wrapping their heads around this where, I mean, somebody like me, I mean, this is what I've been doing for 15 years, <laughs> you know, because it's the way for a professional service business certainly to thrive. But um, I, I think you're suggesting this is anybody and everybody, isn't it? I really, we've been trying to poke holes in it and we've been getting a lot of feedback, our own sounding board, and we haven't found the holes yet. So I'm open to hearing where the problem is, but yes, from a professional services, from coaching to tax strategist, our own tax strategist is starting to use this for her own services. We were contacted by a CPG company recently and using that kind of community yeah. funnel to the, like the sounding board is the, the moms of kids will be eating the product and getting sure. the feedback back. So it's really just putting structure to the marketing with the community community first because nobody trusts pop-up ads and you don't even see emails anymore because they go into spam. And so those normal ways of marketing are kind of, they're hard to do now. Whereas yeah. you always look at the reviews on Amazon, you always put it to Slack and find out what your community knows. So if you can have the community marketing for you, we've always known that, but now there's a process to it. And I think you hit on like the tax strategists. I think B2B companies in particular, have probably been slower to come to this idea. Whereas B2C, I mean, M&Ms has, has a community, right? I mean, I think a lot of B2C companies kind of get that. We have to get out there where the masses are. B2B companies, I think, are probably the greatest untapped opportunity right now. 
I think so too. A lot of, I work a lot in the tech industry. And so they, the history of a community has been an online forum or a Reddit subthread or, you know, right. subreddit, something like User that. Groups, and yeah. so they throw a community manager at it. That's just throwing some questions in there to engage the community, which is one way to do it. But I'm suggesting that's one of the five. Yeah. And so the opportunity to broaden that and make community more of your business strategy and less of a simple marketing tactic. Um, and, and I, I think it's coming around. I think the problem that B2B is going to have is actually executing it because yeah. it's hard to get approval or funding for a role that no one knows if it's going to have value yet. You kind of intrinsically know, but you don't extrinsically know. Yeah. So that's where we have this, the idea of community as a service, which is, you know, helping those companies map out a strategy, map out the monetization plan, and either we help execute or we give them the full plan so that they can outsource the pieces they need to execute. Well, in B2B companies that were naturally slower to come to say social media. And I think in a lot of ways, I'm not saying this is an outreach of social media, but I think people started realizing what was possible, you know, in community because of, of the public facing social media, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. We've, we've had lots of conversations on is social media community. And I think social media enables community and yeah. can be top of funnel for community and can be bottom of funnel, bottom of the funnel for real connection. But it, it's social media isn't inherently community. Same with events. Events, yeah. a lot of event professionals are like, well, my event is the community. Well, it's not the people or the community. The event was simply a vessel for that community to form and bond. So um, I know you write about some of the companies that are doing this well. So maybe you could share a couple examples of people that you think are really not just embracing this, but doing it well. Yeah, I think that, oh my gosh, there's a lot of really good examples. They just quite haven't quite put it into the structure. But you mentioned the whole variety of things. Think about Mr. Beast. You know, he's like, what was he? He's not a brand. He's not a product. He's not a service. What, what is this guy? He's a philanthropist, but he's also, I don't even know what he is anymore. But his community is so rabid and he fits all of the pieces. I mean, top of funnel, he clearly has a show. If you haven't seen Mr. Beast, definitely go look at him. I think he's one of the top YouTubers in existence. Mm -hmm sponsors give him money he spends it by giving it back to people and then he gets a gajillion views and so there's his top of funnel but as you bring that down to the site he has if you google not just the site where the show he's a full philanthropic site and so it's all about the the foundation and the people that he's able to help by doing this big crazy ridiculous thing that he does and then bring it to the series of gatherings look at mr beast burger the fans how many people showed up in minneapolis to get a burger from his <laughs> place you know they want to gather and they want to be part of it and he enables that through the next one down that sounding board of inviting picking subscribers to win an opportunity to go do something and so it just again fuels itself people get to share my friend was on that or he responded to my comment on YouTube like but it's you know a super weird way to think of community because it's not a product or service but it totally fits what's happening well and I, I do think let's bring it down a little more pedestrian than that because I think a lot of companies you know you mentioned your accountant I love to pick yeah. on accountants um, <laughs> that that you know, I think they see that and they say, well, that's fine. If somebody just wants to be a spectacle, you know, right. to get, I mean, the, 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 you know, the means justify the ends, I, I guess, but I'm not doing that, you know, Absolutely. so, so how, what, what's a more maybe relatable um, example or, you know, way that somebody who, who is seen as much more of a conservative business um, and, and at least is shackled by that at the moment. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. So when we talk through our accountant and the way that she can bring this to market, she has the email blasts, right? But that's not top of funnel because it only goes to people that are already on her list. Right. But if she were to either have her own podcast or even a TikTok show where mm -hmm. it's you know, what are some accounting tax, tra tax strategies that you need to know and keep that regularly going. Sure. Now she can be super top of funnel. She does not have to be the one to execute it. But imagine her every Monday, she's just going to set up her phone and record a couple of little snippets of tips and then hire somebody to go do all the editing and put it on TikTok and make sure that it's being engaged with. And so the site isn't just where, how you can find out how you can work with her, but it's a webinar that she's going to be doing or, you know, a small gathering she's doing in Atlanta, Georgia to bring people together to talk about these things. And so she can actually create community around what she's doing. And now people, let me give you another example, all with this. I just ran an event this weekend. We had 15 people together and the whole idea was just, we didn't know what the process was going to be. We didn't know. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we, we didn't know what the can't event turn off was. your phone if you can't find it. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we, we didn't know what the event agenda was going to be. It was just 15 people getting together to talk about their challenges. 
14 of these people said, you know, I actually am interested in taxes. And she ended up running an hour and a half long conversation around taxes and tax strategies and how entrepreneurs can think about this and left our little two day event with seven new clients. So yeah. there's one gathering that brings it together just by her sharing her knowledge. Yeah, um, that's, and, I, I've been I've been teaching that exact <laughs> tactic. I call it peer to peer networking. And it really 100%. you just you just facilitate it and show up and magic happens if you've got, especially if you've got clients in the room, you know, they're going to talk about how brilliant you are. Yeah. And you know, all of us that have been in corporate for a while know that you think through an event strategy and a marketing strategy, where do I need to go and be? And that is borrowing real estate, right? You're renting it on other people's property. But when you can bring that into yourself and create your own community, referrals is still how most of our small businesses grow. Yeah. And I, and I love that too, because you know, it was 14, 15 people. But, you know, again, that accounting is probably not looking for 373 new clients this month, right? I exactly. mean, they they were in a great environment to spend great quality time and get what they needed out of it. It doesn't always have to be the mass thousands of people, does it? That's exactly right. And the CPG company that I mentioned, they have, you know, a niche, unique product that they're bringing to the U.S. They are not a big company. They do not have a lot of money. And they know that they can't just try to get people by pouring all their money into Facebook ads. They really need to build a community. Like think of liquid death, the water. Have you heard this? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. It's water. My kids, in a can. My kids drink it. Let's put it, it that way. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing unique about it, except it's water in a can with really cool marketing and branding. But if you go to their website and join their list, then they're going to send you a t-shirt. So now you're going to go right. advocate for them. And people, when you go to a concert and you're drinking, you have a choice of a beer or a liquid death you, and you need water, liquid death looks pretty darn cool. So again, bringing the community together to get excited about it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's big with the skateboarding and mountain biking crowd. <laughs> you just want to feel like you belong, like, like you're not the person with the water bottle. You want to feel cool. And so again, exactly. it's the sense of belonging, which is what community is all about. So somebody comes to you and says, they listen to this show and they say, I got to look this Liz person up. And they come to you and they say, we got to do this. Um, I, I, you have like a series of questions that I think you published, but kind of go through the process of how you'd work with somebody to help them identify. Cause it's not just, you know, it's like when viral videos we're like all the thing, everybody wanted to make a viral video, but why, <laughs> right? For To what end, right? And I think right. people probably are the same way. Some people run the risk of listening to this and saying, okay, you're right, I need a community. Um, but there's no, like, how does this fit in with the objectives of the business? <laughs> so how do you kind of get somebody oriented? What, you know, you already mentioned kind of some of the journey, but what are some of the questions that would lead to you unearthing what their strategy ought to be? I think really figuring out where are you on your community journey? Do you already have customers or are you right. just starting out from the very beginning and you've written a book and you want to just start from there? And so understanding your, um, I guess I would call it your community maturity level, right? Yeah, if, sure. if you already have a huge following, then that's really easy. You just need to go put a wrapper around them and start doing something with them. But if you're starting from scratch, then we can help identify the strategies. And some of the strategies could be paid strategies, but a genuine community is really more of starting with that sounding board. Can we maybe, you know, I talk about the funnel idea of those five things I brought to you, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop with start with the top of funnel. You can right. start with the people that are already there. I have five friends who believe in me. Great. There's your sounding board. Let's bring them together and start having conversations. And then we can build the strategy around what happens next. So I think you're right. If you have a current community, uh, some of this is a little easier to refine. What about starting from scratch and attracting? I mean, are there elements that need to be there? I mean, I'm in marketing. If I started a marketing community right now, um, it would be pretty hard to cut through you know, the clutter, right? So what are some elements that actually kind of ignite a community when you're trying to get started? Um, have you ever seen that TED talk where they have the guy at the music festival yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one crazy person goes dancing over guy? there? And yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have the leader who goes out there crazy dancing and then he's just being weird. And then a second person joins them. And now the third person is like, oh, it's okay to dance here. Oh, and then it becomes a movement. That's the story of the TED talk. And everybody joins. That is the same thing with community. You get one or two people starting. They invite a friend. They invite a friend. You know, we used to call it, or we still call it viral ticketing when you buy something and then you go get your friends and you get a kickback, whatever. I mean, the, the concepts aren't wrong. It's just using it in a more authentic way rather than a broad shotgun marketing approach way. So 
you talked to a little bit about the um, the show aspect, and I and I think a lot of people can really, I mean, a podcast is a show, a live stream is a show. I think about a lot of people can relate to those examples, but um, going with like your CPG company, um, you know what what are some ways that you're seeing people take that literal idea of show and maybe broadening it? Yeah, for that one, it's TikTok. So it's how do you get something really funky and weird out there that's going to hit, you know, mm -hmm. and viral doesn't have to mean you get 3 million views on something. Viral is just big enough to start growing an audience and making sure that that TikTok has a call to action. So, you know, even in the comments or some way that you can do it so that you start to bring them into your community. Very few people that I've seen anyway, at least I don't often watch a video and then follow the creator. I just keep, you know, sure. scrolling through and watch something else. And so the follow isn't the call to action. The follow is is to start joining the community so you can do something more interesting. And maybe for the CBG company, it's going to be if you sign up here, you're going to get a sample of our products. And so sampling might be the way to go for them because it's new to the market. And so you can start building the community. Now you got a sample. Would you join my sounding board? I'd love to get your feedback. What new flavors should we have? What should we change about it? So <clears throat> when, um, when you talk about gatherings, again, I think a lot of people might jump straight to like a big trade show or some, you know, something on that scale. But, you know, I can't tell you how many times over the years I've, I've told uh, business owners, small business owners that maybe they ought to just bring their customers together for lunch um, and, and how like foreign that idea is. So, I mean, it really can be that simple, right? And you don't even have to have content. And in fact, right now, after two and a half years of pandemic time where we are bombarded with content mm -hmm. and I, to get me to go to a top golf, to listen to your sales pitch, to then swing the <laughs> golf club is kind of like, eh, I'm going to have dinner with my kids instead. But if you invite me to go to a splatter painting room and we're just going to be crazy and get messy and splatter paint everywhere. And now you're going to follow up with me next week when my painting is dry and, you know, get it to me and we can have that conversation. Well, that's a little bit more interesting. And it does not. I mean, that's five people, 10 people bring them together for something. Doesn't have to cost a lot of money. One of those splatter paint rooms is like 500 bucks for six people, you know. So, yeah, like you're saying, it's I think the more impact you can get from a smaller group, then um, that's going to start your share, your share, you know, word of mouth, your, your community. You know, it's interesting. I've noticed too, and I think this is maybe here to stay, but it's certainly a pandemic driven. Uh, we're also sick of Zoom. We're also sick of being lectured at, you know, joining courses that, you know, when watching videos. Um, I've had a tremendous amount of, of positive feedback from bringing people together with zero agenda. Um, yeah. Literally a, let's just get together. We're all business owners or we're all entrepreneurs. Like what's going on in your world? Um, and it's amazing how people, I, you know, we get the best, like, feedback, you know, it was like, that was awesome. That was so great. You're amazing. I was like, we didn't do anything. <laughs> That's literally what we do. We'll show up with a stack of the large format sticky notes, Sharpie markers. We It's called a spontaneous think tank. And you put up there, what are all the challenges that you're trying to solve right now? And then you have everybody go back across those challenges and write their name and phone number on ones that they've solved and can help each other hmm, with. Love that. And so it's this is how we love to format those events. The one we did this weekend, 15 people. We started out with, first of all, you start out with a big shared moment. You have to have a shared experience. And so so for us, it's the family style meal, but we did a nacho table night where you like cover the whole table in aluminum foil and, and chips and put all the things there. So everybody's there eating with their hands, pass me the jalapenos, like breaks down the walls immediately. And then break out the sticky notes and Sharpies and figure out what you're going to do this weekend. It was incredible. Uh, oh, I can't get past the health department moment there. Uh, sorry. <laughs> There's only 15 of us. We didn't have to have that. <laughs> All right. Uh, talk a little bit of, a little bit more about this sounding board, you know, idea. Um, for anybody who's not done, I mean, it's you know, people I've, I've read books over the years, you know, you should have an advisory board or an actual board, right? That companies have. How, how is this maybe different from any of those concepts? Um, I don't think it is different. I think people just need to do it. You can even yeah. buy your sounding board, you know, join a mastermind group, be a part of a community that, that exists out there. It's if you don't know anybody, you can get that way. Or you can ask some neighbors. It's just having a few people outside of your normal day to day that you can ask real honest questions of and get real honest feedback of. When we were first testing out this community as a service idea, we went to someone in our network and pitched it. And he, he uh, manages an incubator with very new startups. Um, and he was like, 
absolutely not. If any of my startups hired you for community as a service, they'd be out of my incubator because they need to start their own community. There is no huh. way I would let them hire that out. He goes, but I would absolutely bring you in and pay for a strategy session to help them identify how they should grow community, what their priorities are. And then once they hit that tipping point that they do need support, now they can go bring it in. And like that wasn't a perspective we'd heard before. And it was very outside of what we heard, although we wanted the negative because we hadn't found it yet. <laughs> but it was hard to hear, but it was like, okay, this is you just need more diverse perspectives. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a great place for me, place for me to ask. Uh, where people can find out more about <laughs> your work or, or connect with you and learn about uh, community as a service. Absolutely. Community, the community com is the website. And I am Liz Lathan with an N as in November on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect. Awesome. Well, Liz, I appreciate you taking a moment to stop by the duct tape marketing podcast and maybe we'll run into you one of these days out there on the road. 100%. Thank you.